Welcome to another episode of Esoterica the Podcast. I'm Chris Schultz. I'm Aaron Christian. And you have stumbled upon us through various uh, outlets, so we're available um, wherever you're listening to us now. We're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, Breaker, Radio Public, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and we now have our own website. Uh, so if you haven't heard that, please check us out at esotericofthepodcast.com. Yes. And uh, we will be updating frequently if we are on new platforms or uh, new episodes are out, new content's out on our YouTube channel or on our social medias. Those will also be updated there. So if you can't keep track of all the things that we're on, visit our website and it's all right there. It is so. all right there. And we'll be making an effort to put some more stuff up on YouTube because you're missing out on our um, radio-friendly faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, getting into it, um, let's start with our regular tradition of trying a carbonated beverage. Yes. Um, so I just discovered today that apparently Aaron is not a fan of soda. Now, for the record, because most people are going to think I'm weird, I'm not a fan of like drinking soda recreationally. Because <laughs> I'm not a fan of how it's carbonated, but like in this setting, I'm okay with it. Like it's once in a while, whatever. Like, I, but I'm not gonna go home and say, "Give me a bottle of Coke, Chris." Yeah, I'm gonna down this. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once in a while, it's okay. But, so tonight, uh, we are giving a try to Flathead Lake Gourmet Sodas, handcrafted Huckleberry Soda. I'm on their website right now. And they describe it as uh, our bubbly sweet soda is a native to Montana. Our huckleberry tastes a little like a blueberry with a hint of raspberry. I had never had a huckleberry before. In fact, when I saw huckleberry soda, I thought of huckleberry hound. Are you familiar with huckleberry hound? No, I actually thought of huckleberry finn. Huckleberry finn, which is a more classical um, reference. Huckleberry hound was a blue cartoon um, hound that was uh, part of the Hanna Barbera um, cartoon programs. We had really crappy cartoons when I was a kid, but Huckleberry was kind of cool. Um, he was relaxed, sweet, and well intentioned. And his um, major villains were Dinky Dalton, Crazy Coyote, <laughs> and Powerful Pierre. So I just want to. I have a positive and a negative thing about this so far. Okay. I love the logo. It's a dragon with sunglasses and his tongue hanging out like he's like, ah. Um, you know, take your oh, yeah, he is old man sun- glasses off over there. <laughs> he is wearing sunglasses. Yes. Um, the only problem I have with it is if you look in the ingredients section, uh, none of those ingredients are huckleberry related. <laughs> Um, it says it has color in there and artificial flavor, which I assume is the flavor, yeah, but you have like high fructose corn syrup, citric acid. I'm like th- there's, there's no, this is all chemicals, oh, dude. Mm. And unlike Moxie, which is a complex blend of flavors, I can't identify. Genetian root. <laughs> this is a one note soda, apparently. Yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm interested. I, I, I like, I like a huckleberry. Well, let's uh, dive in. I, I want the sound. Now my turn. Ooh. Ooh. Very fruity bouquet. Yeah, bouquet. Overpoweringly sweet. Oh, I just stuffed my whole nose. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that. All right, here goes nothing. You made noises. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta oh, drink this now. That's a fruity soda. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't taken a sip yet. I can't stop laughing. Ooh, excuse me, I apologize. That's all right. It's a fruity soda. Mm, wow, it's thick. Like not at thick, maybe isn't the word. It's almost sticky. Do you feel that? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, <clears throat> I get the raspberry and the blueberry hints to it. Yeah. It's very sweet. And I'm not a big raspberry fan, and it's not an overwhelming raspberry thing, so that's a big plus for me, because I usually absolutely hate it. But this is fine. Yeah, it's not bad. 
it's sweeter than I like. Like, I'm a Coke guy over Pepsi because I like my soda more savory. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, I may not sodas. be a soda drinker, but uh, I have an opinion. <laughs> I, I will mention, I know on the last episode when I, we were talking about acquired taste, you got to kind of force yourself to like something. So when we tried the Moxie last week, Aaron bought a 12-pack because that's the only um, vehicle he could find the Moxie in. So they were we, out of the one-liter bottles, and I was very oh. upset. So the 12-pack is at work, and I've been drinking it for lunch every day, and I went from sort of tolerating this exotic soda taste to really enjoying it. I look forward to my Moxie every day. And I see you, I, actually, I saw you drinking it this morning, or this, not this morning, this yeah. afternoon for lunch, and I was like, I should go up, I paid for it, like, I should yeah. go up and have some. <laughs> That's but, why I put it in the fridge at work. Yeah, but I haven't. Yeah. I still, it still bothers me that you tap the soda can because it doesn't do anything. Well, I swear to God, it does, but. I, I can't remember if it was Mythbusters or not that proved it made it worse, but you know what? Um, whatever. Well, all I'm going to say is I have never had a can of soda explode on me after having tapped it. Now, I know that causation, or no, correlation does not equal causation, but those are the facts. I'm sticking with them. <sighs> Old men. Sticking to their old ways. Sticking to their old ways. <laughs> okay, boomer. Although I'm not a boomer. Okay, before we go any further, I want to take a minute to talk about the awesome folks at Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way. In fact, it's the way that we make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it could be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. Best part, no minimum listenership. Ooh. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. It's so cool. I We just, we found the service. We started using it. We're making podcasts. Yeah. Making podcasts, making money, having a good time. So listen, you want to get you out there. You want to be heard. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. So our episode comes out today, March 11th. There's a holiday right around the corner. Yes, on the 17th, so a Tuesday. Tuesday. Six days from now. St. Patrick's Day. One of my favorite holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay, you know what? Since we're talking about this holiday, are you a corned beef and cabbage kind of guy for that day? I am. Um, it's mostly because my wife makes a mean corned beef and cabbage. Ah, yes. Normally, I'm not a cabbage fan, but something about boiled cabbage, is it's okay. I like it as sauerkraut in like a, uh, a Reuben sandwich, which is basically just that dish mm. completely turned into a sandwich. Um, but I don't like cabbage yes. in, in by itself. That's Corned cool. beef, though. Corned beef is good. With the mustard with the little seeds on it. That's, mm. that's what yeah. we have. Fun fact, I learned recently that why it's called corned beef, because I always thought that was weird. And yeah, because, there's no corn. Yeah, it's the salt that they use to cure it. It's like huge, and it's like, like the corns of salt. I don't know, like kernels. Yeah, there, it's just it's, it's something with the salt. Wikipedia. It. Let me Google that for you. <laughs> Let me Google that for you. Corn, beef, and cabbage, um, and uh, nothing like a pint of Guinness, because it's St. Patrick's Day, and everybody's Irish. Which, <laughs> everybody's Irish. That's it. Everybody. It's true. And uh, so here's a, a thing that I do have to comment on. So um, my wife is like 50% Irish. Her, her maiden name is so many letters in it. It's ridiculous. There's so many unnecessary vowels. Absolutely. Two syllables, but like 50 consonants. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I have Irish ancestry myself. One of the things that bothers me at St. Patrick's Day is um, proud to be Irish. I'll lift a line from George Carlin here. It's not a fucking accomplishment. You didn't do anything. It's an accident of birth. <laughs> yeah. Um, George Carlin actually has a really great bit about national and ethnic pride. And the whole thing, it, you know, pride, you take pride in something that you accomplished. And right. it's not an accomplishment to be Irish. It's just an accident of birth. Um, so, misplaced pride. Mm. That's my controversial opinion stolen from George Carlin. Yeah. As well. All right. I think in the context of St. Patrick's Day, that's a little 
to say you have pride in like a group of people for doing what like St. Patrick got all the the quote unquote snakes out. Yeah, like that's you, it, you know what I mean. Like it's yeah. a it's in that context like. If you're having pride for a group of people accomplishing something, and that like that's some, I guess you know what I mean. Yeah. But you didn't make that accomplishment, and I I think that's a different story. I, I don't want to get there's so many things layers to that, but yes, yeah. you're right, um, especially on that day. Yeah, and the proximity that we live into in Boston, and the whole difference between the Irish and American Irish, it's a whole thing. But I don't oh want to alienate a certain percentage of our um, listenership. Um, I love Irish people. I'm uh, I'm married to and sleep with an Irish woman, and she's my favorite woman in the world. <laughs> so, um, Pog Mahone. My God. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. that's St. Patrick's Day, and that's all I got to say about that. So happy St. Yeah. Patrick's Day to our listeners, because our next episode will come out the day after St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll be. Screw whatever I was going to say. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> Where do we go from there? There's nowhere I, to go. Oh, my gosh. So I was thinking about this in the car ride home, and you and I do a lot of thinking in the car. And I don't know ah. what made me think of it. Wow. Sip of soda. Just talk right over me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so you were thinking on your way home. Yeah. Um, we have that Space Force thing now. Ooh, Space Force. Space Force. I have to say, whatever your view is on that, how cool would that be to be in that? Like, where can I sign up? I know, I'm 47, which means, uh, and and I looked into this a few years ago, I'm too old now. I've reached that point in my life where I am too old to join the armed forces of any Mm. type, even the reserves. Um. I totally would want to be like I will make fun of the space force, but to have like a space outfit and shoot lasers and fly around in an X wing fighter, <laughs> like I would totally be on board. That'd be the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I forget where I was gonna go. I'm having a lot of memory loss today. <laughs> we're, we're not actually there. I can tell you that much. Like yeah. so, when you when you mentioned space force, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love and hate that line. Uh, it's a love-hate relationship with most of the things we do on this this show. And that's why we do it. Yeah. I, I mean, the uniforms, like, I know you don't like the camo, but, like, the lettering is blue, and I blue's, like, one of my favorite colors, so I think it that's cool. It does look cool. The only thing that bothers me about the camouflage is the purpose of camouflage is to hide you, and unless our troops are going to be on Endor or the Wookiee planet of Kashyyyk, um, there's no need for camouflage. But to be honest, like, other than the army being in combat, like, I see most people in the military wearing camo, like, a lot in just places they don't need to. That's true. How cool would it be if the uniforms were, like, black with star fields on them? See, that's what would be cool. I would totally do that. I would be so into that. I would make them sign me up for the Space Force. <laughs> I would go to Trump himself and be like, dude, put me in your Space Force. <laughs> put, put me in your Space Force. Space Force. Space Force. That song... Oh my gosh. You know what? You know what we're going to do right now? We are going to play a clip from that song for oh, everybody. 20, thank you. 20 second clip from that song. So we're going to be right back. Carrie, after you, I, you endure. Carrie, I hope you're listening. Yeah. We're going to endure the next 20 seconds of this because this needs to be shared with everybody. Lay it on us. Space, space, there's a war fighting domain. Just like the land, the air, and sea. We have the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Space Force. Uh, my new national strategy could be Space Force, Space, Space, Space. I mean, come on. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> the, the thing about our president, and it really doesn't matter whether you're a fan of him or not. I, I, I find this great because I, I'm a big fan of absurdist humor. No matter what the man says, he gets up and he can say the most ridiculous thing. And half the country is going to blindly agree that that's gospel coming directly from the mouth of God. And the other half of the country is going to go friggin' insane. Like, there's no middle ground. It's cra- it's so funny to watch. Hmm. You hear him in the clips. Like, he, he says, 
let's make a space force. He's probably just shooting off his mouth, and then somebody's like, yeah, that's a good idea. And he's like, you know what? It's a great idea. It's the greatest idea ever. I don't remember where I saw this, but somebody... I don't know how this illusion came out, but they alluded something like that similar situation, basically throwing things against the wall and seeing what sticks. They're mm. like, imagine if... You, I'm, <laughs> preface this, I'm so sorry. Skip ahead 20 seconds if you don't want to hear this. If you were to take a a dump into a, a thing of underwear and just pop it against the wall and watch it slide down, <laughs> you know, like... You'd have a very dirty wall. You would. But, like, it just slowly just... It would stick and then just, like, eventually fall apart. Um, yeah. <laughs> or, if you're lucky, it sticks all the way. I don't know what... Where that came from um, and why I just spent time on this. Yeah, were you making a metaphor or you just like picturing... No, this somebody made a metaphor to that. And, obviously, I forgot the... Uh, what it was meant for. The delivery <laughs> on how it was meant for it. Uh, <laughs> but you get this nice picture in your that's head. That's the thing. Anybody says like something along those lines, like, "Oh, let's just see what sticks." Like that's what goes through my head. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Is it tidy whities or is it? Oh, boxers? It's totally. Okay, because it has to be. It has to be. This is a this is a TMI situation. Nobody throws shitty boxers against the wall. No, I mean, <laughs> never. I never mind. That's a, a, that's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested in joining the space force, sorry applications are available like is there a recruiting office for the space force i i i don't know like i tried to straight up look up what you know space force like what are the details how do you enlist and mm. i i found nothing that's a shame i mean it's only been around since december and we're into march so yeah three months i mean you know but you think there'd be people lined up yeah i'm i'm just glad that they they stopped the empire from striking back Amen to that. <laughs> His return to the Space Force. So, speaking of Space Force, I think that is a natural segue into the album that we are going to be reviewing tonight. Yes. So the album that we are going to be reviewing tonight, uh, I, I found this in a record bin. It's called A G.I.'s Germany in Sound and Music. Recorded on the spot in Germany with the cooperation of the U.S. Army, the U.S. Air Force, and German people. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Oh, my gosh. I apologize if that was loud. Oh, okay. So, um... (laughs) I, I'm not sure what this album is because so the other albums that we've reviewed to date, one of us has been a, known the material right. except the Headlock Dummy. Like I technically had never listened to that, so mm-hmm. I, except for that band that was on that mix. Sing Tree, yeah. Thanks to one of our listeners, Mike Slavin, uh, he posted a video in uh, I think it was in our group or it might have been the page. I think it was the page. The page of a uh, a video of a different song by Think Tree. And he's like, do you remember this? And I, I listened to it, and like, I seriously had a flashback to the 90s. Totally remember. I had forgotten that I remembered that song. You ever have those moments where oh, you yeah. remember something that you forgot? Yes. Uh, it happens a lot with you. We talk <laughs> yeah, about I, things I, over the past like 10 years that you're just like, remember when this happened? I was like, oh, yeah. my God. The man. difference is now it's remember when this happened? Well, this is how it actually went down. And I'm like, what? Oh. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. Um but this album I haven't listened to. Hmm. So looking at the back cover, um, please note that this is volume one. So apparently there are other volumes, at least vol- at least two, I would presume. Are we are we sure? Because History of the World Part One that Mel <laughs> that's true. Brooks thing, it's only one part. There is actually. So when I did an internet search for this, I, I did find volume two. So on the back cover it says, "Here is Germany as the American serviceman hears it and lives it." Here is the brassy beer hall music, the crashing pro- prosit of 1,000 voices from Munich's Hofbrauhaus. My German is terrible, so most of it's pre-industrial and religious. <laughs> so, um, the never-changing sounds of modern Germany, and or the ever-changing sounds of modern Germany, and the never-changing sounds of its bells, beer halls, cuckoo clocks, and cobblestone-clattering honey wagons. So this came out in 1962, and uh, I'm what I'm presuming this is, 
and they'll tell us when we listen to it, is this is the Germany that the U.S. servicemen experienced. So hmm. apparently it was such an experience that when they go home to the United States, they might want to buy a vinyl LP that replicates those sounds so that they can think fondly of it. Hmm. I did not find much information online about this, but uh, like when I went to Discogs or All Music, there were whatever reviews or notes were from U.S. servicemen who were like, yeah, that totally brings me back to... Um, now, of course, we we spend a good amount of time at the American Legion, and I had debated about um, seeing if any of those servicemen had served in Germany mm-hmm. during the 60s and maybe drag them in for this, but... I flaked on it. So we're going to uh, (laughs) endure this ourselves. There's like eight pages of, looks like mostly letters here. Um, But looking at the table of contents, there's um, different sections or sequences. So that's what we're going to listen to. And I think we're going to do our usual format of um, describing it quickly, listening to it, and then giving the listeners our thoughts. Sounds like a plan. Um, There is, I did find this online on Vimeo, so we will link that uh, on the website. As we speak, I'm downloading the MP3 for this to upload our little snippets, so it is there. Cool, cool. And uh, if you've ever wondered what life is like for the U.S. servicemen in Germany in 1962... You can listen to it. I would presume, it would be my guess, I'm doing a lot of presuming, uh, it would be my guess that if you went to Germany today as a serviceman, that some of these sounds would still be around. The ever-changing modern Germany would be ever-changed, but the never-changing uh, stuff should still be the same, right? Right. Okay. So, having said all of that, looking at the table of contents, side one begins with an introduction which is narration, and goes into a Bremerhaven sequence, which contains a troop ship arrival, dockside sounds, welcoming army band, troop ship PA, debarking, and train departures. So, why don't we take a listen to that? Take a listen to... All of that. All of that. That's just one, that's one track. That's the beginning. All right, so what... Uh, and we'll decide on this a little bit later on, uh, exactly how we'll break this up for you, the listener, which you are about to listen to. Um, but we will have, presumably, maybe different sections of these pieces play consecutively or, or some sort. So um, stay tuned for in about a second to listen to how that pans out. So we're going to listen to the Bremerhaven sequence. Bremerhaven, port of embarkation. <laughs> The sound of your troop ship's horn and the welcoming army brass band, a great adventure began. So now that I understand how we're going to do this, <laughs> um, because I didn't see the table of contents before going through this, this will make a lot more sense now. And hopefully you enjoyed what you heard, because I did. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what I enjoyed about it, but I felt like I was a part of whatever was going on mm-hmm. and it just sounded like I was in a room I wish it was if I mean this technology wasn't a thing but have you heard of binar- binaural audio before yes I have so that's the one where they use microphones that are shaped like ears or two microphones um, and they pan them a certain way and they're delayed so that you know when certain sounds come from certain places it sounds like you're a part of the experience mm-hmm. and I feel like if this was made with binaural audio like I would be completely immersed in whatever's going on around me that would be super cool and, and I have to admit I, I never served um, my most of what I understand of the military is from war situations right so Arriving at Germany by ship, like in peacetime, but that's not anything I haven't experienced. It mm. seems to me like Disney World, like there's a brass band playing when you arrive, and right. there's like fanfare. Um, that seems like cool and exciting. Like you're excited to be here. Not mm. people aren't shooting at you. And I have a friend of mine who actually uh, was stationed in Germany mm-hmm. um, for a while. So 
uh, I'm not sure what his experience was, and I'll have to ask him now when he got there and stuff. I know um, he has had some stories. Yeah, you should uh, have him take a listen to this because it does say on the back that there are some never-changing sounds of Germany, so mm. they should still be the same. So that was that sequence was all about. Well, there was the introduction to the album, and then uh, the arrival, your arrival in Germany. So the next section is a sound section. So your classic sound effects. Church bells, cuckoo clock, music box, police car alarm, German toilet, ooh, mm. brewery, beer pouring. Kind of feel like the toilet should come after the beer pouring, but that's just me. <laughs> so uh, let's check out some of the sounds. Let's dive in. I feel like I need to visit Germany. Yeah, I could. I, I've never been to Europe at all. Um, I, I've never been off this continent. Nor have I. Well, I came going down to the Keys was probably the closest because I was off the contiguous United States. But yeah, um, I mean, I've been to Canada, but I haven't. Yeah. yeah, that's the continent, but. I'm going to cough. <coughs> Not me this time. So that was an interesting little collection of sounds. Uh, the German police car. I like the sound of European sirens, I have to say. So I feel like all European sound, like sirens, mm -hmm. sound like three gay men having a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> Especially nowadays in like France. It's like, oh, 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 um, oh. So, not so much in this, but just, I don't know. It's, uh, it was a whole family guy bit. But I, I, agree, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I agree with them. I, I didn't want to use my uh, catchphrase, and I'm like, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but no, I'm just saying, look up French, like, fight. you'll agree with me. The funny um, thing is, like, I like the sound of the siren. Mm. The sound of, like, European phone ringings pisses me off. Yeah. Eh, eh, you know, it's like Pink Floyd, The Wall. That is the first eh, time I've heard. Eh, yeah, I'm like, no wonder people are uptight in Britain because they listen to that when they call people. Like, yeah. I would just be, you would pick up the phone and say hello, and I'd be like, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm glad our phones don't sound. Yeah, like. uh, the beer pouring was a little uh, under satisfying. Only because it sounded more like somebody drinking it than it being poured into a glass. Yeah, I did notice, and I don't know if it's weird that I picked up on this, but the, the opening, the pop sound, that's like a cork. That that was not a, um, that wasn't a bottle cap. Mm. Like, that's the, the beer that comes with the, with the weird little poppy thing. No. Yeah. yeah, so that's pretty cool. All right, so our next section, speaking of beer, is a beer hall music sequence. So, uh, Germany's answer to a bar, I guess. Hmm. Um, what they have written here is all in German. And because I like people who listen to our podcast, I'm not going to attempt to say that stuff. <laughs> and just leave it at, this is the Beer Hall music sequence. Welcome back to the Beer Hall. Oh God! Mm. So I'm gonna say this. I, you know, I I don't frequent bars, but I've spent time in bars here in America. Um, you go in, you drink. There's music playing. You usually have conversations or play some darts. Mm -hmm. I love this, and I can tell you this much: if I was in Germany, going to a beer hall, I would be shit faced all the time. <laughs> Just drinking beer after beer, singing along. I don't know the words, but everybody's holding hands. You know, get their no, arms nobody locked. Nobody else knows the words either. They're it's just Germany. Saying, yeah. <laughs> like, and how can you not just pound big stein of beer after another while everyone's singing? Like, oh my lord. Yeah, uh, it just it just kept going, and um, I'm gonna take. I, a, 
a I'm while. Sorry, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I ran over you. Uh, I, I'm going to take a wild guess here that probably what U.S. servicemen did in Germany was spend a lot of time in the beer halls. Like yeah. when they weren't doing like soldier stuff. Soldier stuff. Because <laughs> that was a big bulk of this side of the album. They played a bunch of different songs. Mm. Interesting. That was, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I totally want to go to a beer hall now. <laughs> or at least go to Epcot and go into <laughs> the Disney version of a beer hall because that's as close as I'm going to get anytime soon. Although, maybe if we got some supporters and uh, got raised some money with this podcast, uh, we could take it on the road and actually go to a beer hall in Germany and let you guys Ooh. know all about it. Yeah. I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I, I'm willing to. I, oh, man, a week time in Germany? Oh, I yeah. don't know. So, uh, listen, Esoterics. Throw us some money, and we'll go, and we'll tell you how cool it is. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you a shirt. So the, the the next section is a language section. There's an introduction, and then they have some GI German slang, which I feel could be dangerous for us to learn. Yeah. European radio excerpts and, and AFN radio excerpts. Hmm. So uh, let's check out the language section Let's go for it. G.I. German slang. Well, that's mocking no Nicky to wish. You better believe it, C.I. When I say I'm a short-timer, I mean I'm about to Z.I. to the land of the round doorknob and the big PX. T.D. White at Grafenvir? Man, you've had the schnitzel. Bubligan? Off the Autobahn at the Weigen Ausfahrt. Links, and it's thir- about 13 clicks. Where am I go- so when did Germany get banjos? The interesting question. So, I, 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 AFN Radio is American Force Network, so I'm guessing that they're playing American music, which seemed to be overwhelmingly like shit kicking music, hmm. and classical music. Like that's an odd combination: banjos and orchestras. Yeah. So I, something you said in the beginning that I think is maybe confused me a little bit in the beginning, and may, I'm just going to ask the question to clarify. Is this set in the 60s, or is this from people who were there in, like, World War II? This was recorded in 1962, which, interesting, I noted when they were playing the excerpts from European radio that um, I couldn't understand what the woman was saying, but I clearly heard President Kennedy. So this is 1962. This yeah, is before so that, he was assassinated. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think this is Cold War era. Um, okay. Probably, if it was released in 62, I'm going to guess it was recorded in 62 or 61. Because mm-hmm. I'm not hearing uh, what I would presume to be a lot of post-production work on this album. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed the banjo in it. I like the, the trumpet they just had in there. I like the taste of it. Getting that feel for what a serviceman would be listening to. Like, you know, you're kind of homesick. This yeah. is the sound of home, which... For us New Englanders, it's I guess it's a little weird to hear like all banjos and bluegrass, but right. that's distinctly American. <laughs> so the next section, which would be the last part of side one, uh, if you're listening to a traditional LP, is Bavarian music excerpts. And again, there's a bunch of stuff in German, but I do recognize the word Glockenspiel Ooh, I know and that Yodeler. Is. And guten Abend and guten Nacht. Guten Nacht is good night. Ah. I know that much. Know a very very little bit of German. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I do remember hearing people mention that the Bavarians are the fun loving Germans. You know when people talk about the dark days of Germany, that it was um, the Bavarians were not the ones out making war. They're the ones. Um, eating pretzels and drinking beer. So <laughs> let's check out some Bavarian music. And the yodelers. Mountain music for sure. So have you ever tried a yodel? I was just going to ask you if you've ever yodeled. I have never successfully yodeled um, because it is freaking hard. It's all this like, in, it's, it's inflectionary things. So it's all in that break in your voice before you, it turns into falsetto. The, in your lane. It's all, <laughs> obviously it's not good. Um, but it's all based on that. 
Um, so. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't sound <laughs> difficult. I, I'm noticing that there's a common theme here with um, beer. Beer ba- I think they actually refer to it as beer based music. And it's really funny. And to revert back to what we talked about in the beginning of the episode was St. Patrick's Day. Is so many people associate like alcohol and getting just absolutely shit faced to be a part of Irish culture primarily. Mm-hmm. And they make fun of the Irish always for being like drunks, like Germans in Germany. It's all like, about drinking. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. Oktoberfest. There's a freaking <laughs> it's a whole month. holiday. Yeah, <laughs> that is a good point. So you know, I'm just saying, uh, don't disparage those people. <laughs> I thought of a, a little story, um, which may be folklore. When, when they were wrapping up this uh, Bavarian music excerpt, the uh, narrator mentioned a Bavarian band at the end of the night, ragged after many beers, mm. kind of stumbling their way through a song. Um, Tom Waits recorded an album based on a play that he had written called The Black Rider. And there's an instrumental sequence. I believe it's called Russian Dance. Um, but the story behind it, and I don't know if this is a true story or not, but it's an awesome story, is that he had the orchestra or in a like small, unheated cottage where they were recording it, because Tom Waits is really into the, the sound of the room that he's recording in. And basically, to get the sound he wanted out of them, he made them play the song again and again and again and again for hours while he screamed at them. And then the final take he took, you can literally hear the musicians wanting to kill him as they're like just pounding and grinding their way through the song. So I don't know if it's true or not, but when you mm-hmm. listen to the song, you totally hear that. And yeah. like the, to me, that just that's an amazing story. Bullshit or not, I like it. I like that. Hopefully it's folklore. Hopefully it's not folklore. folklore. Hopefully it's not folklore because I mean, it's, feel bad for the musicians. But yeah, but what a cool story. And the the whole Black Rider, I, I bring it up also because it's a um, it's based off a German folklore story. Mm. So maybe that's a episode for another day. So this brings us to side two. Side two also has an introduction, and then goes into a military section. Just taking a quick look at what's on here for the military section, it appears to be a bunch of military-related sound effects. Army readiness alert. uh, Armor rolls through German village. Air Force scramble with intercom clearance. Infantry company in attack. Marching soldiers singing Lola. Lola? Like the kinks Lola? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's do it. And you weren't holding the line alone. NATO friends were at your shoulder. British, French, Dutch, Belgian, West German. The force of many tongues, one purpose. And nothing seemed to symbolize this more than our German allies, who, whenever they marched with you, sang. So that was not the Kinks Lola. No, it was not. (laughs) You know, and again, I'm not going to pretend to understand the way the military works. But it, something fascinating to me about the idea that during the 40s, we were at war with this country. Mm. We invaded, we slaughtered Germans yeah. with due cause, apparently, because they were doing some pretty evil shit. Pretty not cool. And then here it is 20 years later, and we're marching with them and singing together and drinking beer, mm. and we're cool. I mean, granted, at that time, it was only half of Germany. Right. But the same thing with Japan. Like, we dropped two atomic bombs on them, and now we're buddies. It's just... Yeah. I mean, President Obama did apologize for that. Yeah, finally, somebody did. Mm. I guess I would have to say, war. What is it good for? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> so this brings us to the next track on side 2, which is Inside Munich's Hof. Brow House, which is probably a beer house. And it's several songs, also written in German, and I'm not going to attempt to pronounce those. <laughs> so let's hear some of Munich's Hofbrau House. You are back again in that huge, world-famed Hofbrau House. <laughs> Yeah. 
I don't speak German, obviously. No. But it's seeming to me like a lot of this music sounds the same. Like, I'm sure if I understood what they were saying, it would sound different, but... Mm. Yeah, don't let that last name fool you, Chris. You are not as German as I thought you were. No, and actually, the, the little bit I've looked into my ancestry, the Schultz that came over here came from Sweden. So That's not fair. Yeah, I'm sure that that name... They came to Sweden from yeah. Austria or Germany, but um, as far back as I could go, it was from Sweden. So, yeah, and name only. So the next sequence, more sound effects. This is a transportation sequence. Air hmm. Terminal PA, Straussenbahn, inside the Bahnhof, and Autobahn sounds. So I would guess for the GI just traveling around Germany during his normal scope of GI duties. GI. I never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a listen to the transportation sequence. They also delivered you to the excitement and mercy of German transportation. Oops, careful crossing that street there. Hop a crowded Strassenbahn and you're off. <laughs> we were both left speechless. So yeah. I learned a few German words that time around. Nine way. Straussenbahn is apparently a trolley. Hmm. And the Bahnhof is an underground railroad, like a tube. The I thought you meant the Civil War. Yeah. Thing. No. Uh, no. Huh. Like so, like a subway. Underground Railroad is Subway. Right? Yeah, Subway. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. I said tube like I'm British or something, but I meant <laughs> Subway. And the Autobahn. So that's the sounds of traveling around Germany. I, You know, when we first dove into this album, I, I thought it was kind of funny because it's something so weirdly specific. Right. But number one, I feel like if I was a GI who had been stationed in Germany and listened to this, like... I might play this for my family. Be like, this is what it was like being in Germany. Mm. And I would probably enjoy myself immensely. Yeah. And and on the other side of that, I really wish I was a GI who had been stationed in Germany. Because, like, this is cool. Yeah, I'm absolutely. enjoying it vicariously. Which uh, is bringing us towards the end. We're, we're close to closing out here. Uh, the next two tracks would appear to be songs sung by the Men's Chorus of Germany. Muss I den and du kannst nicht tracen. I apologize to any Germans out there. It's the best I can do. So let's hear those two tracks before we wrap up the album. American music in Germany was easily accessible. Simply a letter to AFN. That's requested by old Pete there in Munich. Also to Rainer from Ingeborg in Neustadt. To Jim from Lucy Sue in Augsburg. To Ingrid from... For German music, you bought the band a round of beer. Or you just... They appear to like to sing in Germany. I get that, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of singing across this entire album. And as a musician, I am not necessarily opposed to that. There's just, there's just a lot to unpack there. And it seems that maybe, at least in, in these cases, it's traditional for, like, it's singing is... Or listening to singing, it's not a spectator sport. Like, right. you're getting drawn in. You're expected to join in whether you speak German or not. So that's kind of cool. It's not mm. exclusionary. You're part of the band, whether you like it or not. So we've reached the point in the album, which I'm sure was difficult for many a soldier. It's the departure sequence, mm. which includes the sounds of processing out, a jet warm-up and takeoff. And then the Seventh Army Symphonic Band playing some German song. So these would be the sounds that you would hear as you departed Germany and headed back stateside. So let's go along for the journey. Let's depart. But perhaps as you boarded the plane that last day, there was a mixture of feeling. A small tug somewhere inside. A feeling that you were taking with you something unseen. Or perhaps a feeling that you were leaving something behind. A feeling that I'll be the one... So? I didn't want to leave. I know. <laughs> Back to America. Mm. 
it it's reminiscent at the end of it of the Disney movie. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel one like, of the early ones, like the like the Walt Disney twenties, thirties, forties, fifties. Yeah, even probably even this era. It's the kind of storytelling. Yeah. With the narrator. Yeah, I feel like uh, I went on this journey hmm. in sound and music. It was an enjoyable journey, and um, as I tend to mention in this part of the episode. I enjoyed what journey that album brought me through. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like I was in it a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm sitting here with you in an old church listening to it off your laptop. But I felt like I was a part of it. And I was in Germany and doing that. Mm. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I do as well. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I, I'm glad I happened upon this because it's... Uh... It was a cool little experience. I I feel like I've learned something. Right. Um, And if I... I suppose now if I talk to a serviceman who is stationed in Germany, like, I'd have some reference points. Mm. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So I guess a a thank you goes out to... I have no idea who produced this album. I feel like I had that information open... Um, and I have since shut it. Oh, it's scratched up pretty good. It's documentary recordings. Hmm. With just a... And on the label, it just has an address. There are other albums. Yeah, documentary recordings. They have uh, a couple of... They have a few other albums in the collection. There's Double Time, Army Basic Training and Sound. Boot Camp, yep. U.S. Navy Recruit Training and Sound. Airmen... U.S. Air Force Basic Training and Sound, The Making of a Marine, which I presume is Marine Training and Sound, A G.I.'s Journey in Sound and Music Volume 2, G.I.'s Germany, Battle Sounds and Marching Songs of the New German Army, Duty on Our Country, The Farewell Address of General Douglas MacArthur, and Mox Nick's Comrade, which is a humor album. Um, probably something to do with Russians, maybe? I suppose. It makes sense for the time. Yes. So that was the experience. Uh, as I said, I will we'll, we'll put up a link to the, the Vimeo audio of this if anybody wants to listen to the entire thing. I, I would encourage it. Yeah, I would. And I would listen to it. We, we broke it up into pieces. I think it's probably best to listen to not breaking up into pieces. Just, like, just listen to it all the way through. Maybe when you're on the train. Maybe when you're driving home from work. I don't know. I just think it'd be interesting to do it instead of chunking it up like that. I, I think that might have hindered the way that I listened to it, but I still enjoyed it. And in all seriousness, I might suggest, especially with uh, some holidays coming up, ask family members. If you have an uncle or a parent or someone in your family that served in Germany during the 60s or 70s, like see if they'll sit down and listen to this with you and and tell you how much it brings back for them like i think that yeah. would be a cool experience maybe it's complete bogus it could be maybe they just made it up in some studio in yeah. burbank who knows who knows oh my gosh i'm popular <laughs> so that's the end of our episode for this week um conclusion conclusion what do we call this closing closing cl- nation i almost said closet nation um oh silly me so what do we got up on deck for next week well uh i have an album that i'm going to be bringing to the table and um with this album i'm kind of pushing it on the uh rare side of what we do on this show um and it only recently became rare i'd say and it's interesting because when we did sports last week um i kind of kept it on this whole feeling of how um People react to things nowadays and certain issues that were less talked about before. And this is kind of staying along those lines and um, and such, but the music and stuff on it isn't necessarily weird. But I'm calling it rare in this sense because recently um, this band, Bay Faction, um, took these songs off of Spotify and where they had them before. And it's not even on Bandcamp and stuff. You can find them still on, on YouTube mm-hmm. and places. 
Um, but Bay Faction's self-titled album, album Bay Faction, um, even bits and pieces of it weren't even out. So it was only like three songs they ended up releasing from it, and the rest of it you couldn't really see. And now it's just completely off. They're focusing on the new material, and I think that's cool. But so this is on the rarer side of things. There are a few minor details in there I think will be interesting. And again, I'm interested to see what your reaction is to, similarly to sports, kind of how we went into depth on how people react to the situations. I think we're going to be doing a similar thing with this. So that's what I got on deck for us for next week. And cool. um, I'll have links and stuff to that album when it comes time for it. And... Um, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's what's on deck. So in the meantime, if uh, you're fans of us, continue following us. Um, you know, check out our new website, EsotericaThePodcast.com, which has links to our Facebook, our Instagram, as well as the various platforms that you can listen to the podcast on. Yes. And we'll be posting, uh, as always, additional content. So there should be a post up after this episode drops with links to the the vimeo video and any other relevant information um maybe a link to flathead soda yeah check out our website because i we don't expect you to keep track of every single thing that we have going on all the time and uh that's our job so check out our website all that information and all those things will be there um you know keep yourself up to date and you know live life a little offbeat Awesome, and we look forward to having you back for us with our next episode. Until then, um, we're still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> see um, you yeah, Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. <laughs>